Like it or not, the senior and elderly population is vulnerable to negligence committed by medical professionals, nursing home and assisted living facilities, pharmaceutical and medical device companies, insurance companies, and everyday individuals and businesses. The Injured Senior Podcast is here to help. Steve Heisler is the creator of the National Injured Senior Law Center and has been advocating for seniors' rights for over 20 years. You have questions, and Steve Heisler has answers. This is the Injured Senior Podcast. Hello, my friends. This is Steve Heisler, attorney and CEO of the National Injured Senior Law Center. I am also the creator and host of this podcast, the Injured Senior Podcast. So I've been practicing injury law since like George Bush Sr. was in the White House. And a lot of my cases have been workers' compensation cases. I want to talk to you today about occupational diseases, which are workers' compensation cases, and how these type of ailments apply to the senior community. So occupational diseases are defined as any chronic ailment that occurs as a result of working conditions or occupational activity. Chronic, meaning persisting for a long time. Now, this is different from the usual job injury, which involves a particular incident that happens, such as a slip, trip, and fall, and it happens in a snap, and the person is injured. Occupational diseases are different mainly because they normally do not develop overnight. They happen over a sustained period of time. And that is why I am devoting this episode to discussing occupational diseases. As I said, I've handled hundreds of occupational disease cases in my career, and many of the claimants with the occupational diseases were seniors. Now, why is that? As I said, occupational diseases occur over a particular period of time. That can be from as little as several weeks to as long as several decades. Most occupational diseases I see have happened over a long period of time, like years and years. So somebody can start a job as a young person, young, strong, But over the years, the working conditions of the job can wear the person down, causing an occupational disease. And by the time the occupational disease actually manifests itself, that young worker is now a senior. Here's something else. You can be diagnosed with the occupational disease when you're in your 30s or 40s. However, The physical and mental symptoms of the disease continue to worsen and cause big, big problems when you reach your senior years. Thus, I think it's fair to say, my friends, that there are currently hundreds of thousands of seniors who are suffering from occupational diseases in the United States. So, you are a senior listening to this podcast today, suffering from a health condition that you believe you got from work. In future episodes, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do to protect yourself and get the compensation you need to pay your medical bills and time loss from work. For now, I want to identify some occupational diseases that you may be suffering from. One of the most common occupational diseases is occupational asthma and COPD. Folks, 30% of COPD, and that's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and adult asthma cases may be attributed to occupational exposure. This could include coal dust from the mines, grain dust from farming, cotton dust, the machinist who breathes droplets of cutting fluids, the nurse or nursing assistant who is allergic to latex, the bartender or waitress who inhales secondhand smoke, 
the housekeeper or janitor who was exposed to the noxious chemicals from cleaning supplies, the factory worker who inhales metals in foundries, silica, or fine sand. Another common occupational disease is hearing loss. Hearing loss, according to the National Institute of Health, is most likely to develop as a result of gradual chronic exposure to noise. This includes these type of jobs. Manufacturing. Now with manufacturing, here's an astounding statistic. Eight out of 10 in manufacturing have noise-related hearing loss. That's right, eight out of 10 workers in manufacturing have noise-related hearing loss. This also includes construction workers, people in the military. Here's another incredible statistic. 60% of returning combat troops from Iraq and Afghanistan have noise-induced hearing loss. Farming, one-third of farmers have hearing loss. Starts at a young age with exposure to livestock, tractors, combines, and the like. Another occupational disease is carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, carpal tunnel syndrome is the inflammation of tendons and nerves in the carpal tunnel region, causing numbness and tingling in the hands and wrists. So what type of workers get carpal tunnel syndrome? How about farm workers? They get it from milking cows, poultry workers from deboning animals and poultry, factory and assembly workers who grasp and assemble objects. Now, I recently had an occupational disease workers' comp case where I had a client who was in her mid-50s and she developed carpal tunnel syndrome after only a few weeks on the job. Now this job, she worked at a large company and she had to assemble and pack items into boxes. She was expected to pack 90 boxes an hour. Yes, you didn't hear that wrong. Now, mechanics also come down with carpal tunnel syndrome. They wear poorly fitted gloves. They use spray guns. Garment workers get carpal tunnel syndrome from knitting and tugging fabric. Janitors from scrubbing clerical and office workers from computer keyboards. Yet another occupational disease is musculoskeletal disorders, herniated discs, back and neck, surgeries from years of lifting. Lots and lots of workers come down with musculoskeletal disorders as a result of long time lifting and long time pulling and pushing of heavy items. Uh, heavy objects. So that's another one. Now, what you need to remember, my friends, is that a worker's career can span 30 to 40 years. Occupational diseases generally are gradual and take time to appear. In these situations, the employer is responsible. And that's the big takeaway from this show, my friends. If you believe that you have developed an occupational disease from work, and if we can show that it is related to your job, the employer is responsible. Now, you ask, responsible for what? How about medical treatment, lost wages, payment for any permanent disability, even if the permanent disability is only partial, meaning that you were 100% before you developed the occupational disease, but now you're only 80% or you're only 60%. You're entitled to get compensated for that permanent partial impairment. The employer can also be responsible for vocational rehabilitation to get you retrained and back in the workforce if you choose. So folks, if you believe you have suffered an occupational disease and want to share it with me, or discuss whether you might have a case, please email me at info at injuredseniorhotline.com. 
I want to hear from you. Now, that's it for today's show. If you're engaged with the content I discussed on today's episode, please head over to the show notes where you will find a summary of today's episode and any important links we might have mentioned on the show today. Also, please feel free to reach out to me directly at info at injuredseniorhotline.com with any comments or suggestions. Thanks again for listening. Talk to you next week on our next episode. Thanks for listening to the Injured Senior Podcast with Steve H. Heisler. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate, subscribe, review, and share on Apple, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. To find out more or to get help anytime, go to InjuredSeniorHotline.com or call 855-622-6530. We'll see you next time.